Now, what you're going to understand is this, is that surrounding the throne of God is a rainbow. Now, why would he have a rainbow surrounding the throne of God? It's to show that all the colors of creation match with him. So here are all the primary colors, so to speak. And then why they would be surrounding God is because God's the only being and person that can give all the colors throughout creation what we have today. So it shows right here that this rainbow, which is his essence, so to speak, and because all these colors are surrounding God, you got to understand that everything was created by God, correct? Everything was created by God. So because everything is created by God, when he creates everything in this universe, it just doesn't come naturally with colors by itself. He had to give it the color to begin with. Look at Revelation chapter 4. We'll look at verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. So notice right here that surrounding the throne of God is like unto an emerald. So God Almighty, he is sitting on his throne. And so I'm going to draw him kind of see-through right here. So because he is a spiritual being, so he is see-through, so to speak. Okay? Yeah. So, all right. Hey, 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 hey. He might send lightning down from heaven if you're not careful. Okay? So, <laughs> so this is God Almighty. And then he's surrounding... Uh, the rainbow surrounding his presence. And what you're going to find out what's interesting is that there's going to be a rainbow that associates with his presence surrounding God. Now we're going to look at Genesis 1. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 1. So we saw Revelation 4 right here. So this is a picture of what we can see. Now we're going to look at Genesis chapter 1. And then I want you to go to John chapter 1 as well. Genesis 1 and John chapter 1. Genesis 1 and John chapter 1. Now all the universe was created by a particular being. Look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So notice right here that everything in the universe is dark. So now his creation is going to begin. How does he begin creation? And God said, let there be what? Light. And there was light. You'll notice that the light spectrum, it kind of matches with the rainbow. So you see right here that in, to begin creation, you must have colors in your creation. That's why he created light to begin with, so that he can start the colors of his creation. But how can light be created unless the colors are in God's hand? It's of him. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And we will read John chapter 1 and verse... 4, verse 4, John chapter 1 and verse 4. So we saw Genesis 1, John chapter 1, and it's describing about the being here. So all cannot be created unless it came from this being. John chapter 1, verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the what? Light, light of men. So humanity can now exist due to this light. And the light shineth in darkness, <clears throat> and the darkness comprehended it not. Look at verse 7. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the who? Light, that all men through him might believe. Why, we know that's Jesus Christ. Look at verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light. He's the one that gives life throughout all the world all of creation. But look at this. This is very plain from verse 3. All things were made by who? Him. And without Him being the light was not anything made that was made. Creation cannot exist without the light. 
So why is it that you and I can exist and everything that we make in this earth exists? All of nature exists, the universe exists because of the colors from that light. It makes up of him. It makes up of him. So that's why when God can breathe it out, fling out the stars and do anything by the word of his mouth or by his hands, all of his creation will compose of these colors from him. Now, this is, cre this is creation. It cannot exist without colors, without light. Creation cannot exist without such colors and light. That is your God Almighty. So what's very interesting is that this is the origin. The origin of everything is light. The rainbow and colors of God. Now, if this is associated with God Almighty, light and rainbow, then think about a lot of the things that we see today of what people are doing and what Satan wants to imitate in our world today. Let's first look at Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 9, excuse me, Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Where's the first rainbow in the Bible? Noah. Nope. You forget God. God, he's the first rainbow. That's why you can have a rainbow here on earth today. Because it originated with God. Did you read Revelation 4? Remember? It's already surrounding God's throne. He's always been there for eternity. Then, finally, God decides to grace us, to bless us by bringing this rainbow down on the earth. And we get basically a glimpse of God's presence. That should be very humbling. So when we go see the rainbow outside, and when we're on the earth and we witness the rainbow from outside, we got to realize this. And it's a small part of God's own creation, a picture, a representation of God's own glory. It's something very humbling right there that surrounds the presence of God when we see the rainbow. Look at Genesis chapter 9. And we will read verse 12. And God said, This is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and, and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between what? Me and you. See this rainbow? It's showing between him and them on the earth. It's showing that covenant that he makes. That what? He will not send a flood. Let's keep reading. And every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. This is a covenant that shows between God and men that he will not send a flood upon the earth again. Now think about this. Before God as light, as rainbow, was able to create all the universe at Genesis 1, what was there before? There was a universal flood at Genesis 1-2. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and after that, God said, let there be light. How is a rainbow formed? Scientifically speaking, it is what? There is sunlight as well as a watery atmosphere. When there's like a watery atmosphere and surrounding as well as sunlight, then you can get a rainbow as a result. That's how God, in his Bible, deliberately created it to be. After his water of judgment, then would come his promise. After that, it's a sign of his promise. You know what's also interesting about the rainbow? It would go on like the up opposite side where the sun is at times. Who is the son of righteousness with healing in his wings? God Almighty. And that's, that rainbow that shows on the other side is showing you the other side of God right there. That God's promise can go from end to end. It's an amazing thing about the rainbow 
what is symbolic of, a representation of from God. Now, the thing is, is that obviously that's why Satan, he wants to mimic it. For example, if you hear certain mythology, I believe from Norse mythology, what is the rainbow? It is a bridge between mankind and the gods from Asgard. So why is that? Where do they get that from? That's from the Bible. The Bible. It is a token between God and men, he said. But in Norse mythology, Satan, with his own gods, with his own demonic beings, he has that rainbow between the realm of the gods and humans. Satan always wants to mimic and imitate God. Here's another thing right here. You see uh, a leprechaun and then a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and everyone's trying to search for that pot of gold, but it cannot be found. It's so appropriate where you have a pot of gold that cannot be found at the end of a rainbow because you can't literally find the end of a rainbow there. But the thing is, is that what does that represent? It represents heavenly gold that cannot be found Amen. except behind a spiritual, Amen. invisible plane. Rainbow is not a physical thing. It's an optical illusion. Yeah. It's an invisible see-through thing. It's not something you can handle. But that's what you got to go. You got to enter the spiritual realm and you'll see that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But see, Satan likes to imitate that. So then he has his little demonic little leprechaun right over there finding his own pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Here's another thing. What about unicorns among children today? You notice a rainbow color associated with the unicorn? A rainbow color that's associated with the unicorn. Why is that? Why are all these things matching up? Well, because isn't Jesus Christ riding upon a white horse? He rides upon white horses, the Bible says. And his glory and his presence is a rainbow. But then Satan, uh, if you study some things which is pretty dark concerning about children, what they have with unicorns, it's very dark stuff. If you see some of the elites and some quote unquote that you've heard about conspiracies about Illuminatis, they have a unicorn symbol behind it. And then it's, some, it's disturbing that it's actually you can see it on public that they sell unicorn dung in a rainbow color format sometimes. I, I'm not kidding you. If you don't believe me, look it up yourself. I kid you not. So where are all these things coming from? Uh, what about uh, the LGBTQ community? They have a rainbow thing to represent any sex or gender. We can all be united. But here's the thing right here is that Satan, he always wants to imitate God, right? And he wants to bring his own meaning. He wants to sully that godly token it token and covenant between mankind. Mankind has sullied God's presence, what God intended. They used it for their own gain, their own purpose, their own representation of something. In fact, if you uh, study the history about certain people who use rainbow, it's a symbol of unity. It's a symbol of different nations and people uniting together. That's why we have a tolerance and the LGBTQ community would use that for their flag. It's all different kinds of genders, nationalities, people to unite together. But what will that fulfill at the end? You all know this. It's a new world order, one world religion, one world government. That's what Satan wants at the end is a combination of everything and distort God. Amen. The rainbow is supposed to be God. But then what Satan wants to do is use that for his own thing. Yep. Why? Oh, look at Revelation 4. Your, your hand is Ezekiel 28, right? Mm -hmm. Mm, look at this. Look at this. You ready for this? And then I got a, another one that's even more of a doozy after this concerning the rainbow. All right. Let me show you. Look, at, look back at Revelation 4. Let's look back at Revelation 4. And let's see what the Word of God says. Scripture with Scripture. Amen? Amen. And then with Scripture with Scripture, what that means is you're combining things together to come up with the right doctrine. It doesn't mean you're splitting, the, you're rightly dividing the word of truth. No, you don't. That's not what it means, okay? Division is separation. Okay, this is combination. Okay, so let's combine this. Let's not divide it to the right time period, right group of people, okay? That's not what we're doing. We're combining scripture with scripture to see the doctrine. Yeah. We all follow the common sense pattern here, right? This makes sense? Yeah. All right, so don't divide it to the right, uh, to the, some group of people time period with rightly dividing. That's not what it means. 
Okay, so Revelation chapter 4, look at verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow, right? A rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an what? Emerald. emerald. So this rainbow is likened to the sight of an emerald. Now, go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. You know what Satan has? The rainbow. All colors the Lord decked him with. Oh, yeah. what? And that's why, that's why if you read the book of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, the priests, they would have a similar rainbow color. Why? Because Satan was the high priest back. He was the high king back before Adam's creation. But mankind took it over, and Satan don't want that. Verse 13, Ezekiel 28, 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious what? Stone was thy covering. See that? He's got all the colors of the stone. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the ox, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the what? Emerald. Emerald. And the carbuncle and gold. Look at that, gold. He's got his own pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know who that leprechaun is? That's probably the devil right there. <laughs> so you see everything? He has his own unicorn, his own colors, his own flag of the LGBTQ community, his own United Nations, everyone uniting together, his own rainbow, so to speak. Because why? Satan has always imitated God. Satan has always imitated God. So it's not just God. You got an adversary right here. He is known to be as the fifth cherub. He is known to be the bull. And this fifth cherub, this being right here, he will imitate God Almighty. And as he imitates God Almighty, he has his own rainbow, so to speak. His own rainbow, so to speak. That's what Satan has always done throughout history. Rainbow should be a godly sign, a holy sign, but mankind and the world has sullied it to their own standard, to their own thing. By the way, that's the same thing with technology too. What are they trying to give you? All the colors, all the major colors. And Apple, I don't know if you knew this, when they started out their logo, didn't you know what, what one of them was a long time ago? It was a rainbow. Oh, yeah, it's a rainbow. It was a rainbow apple. Not only that, the apple was eaten. You know what it was supposed to represent? They said this, the, the people who were in charge of Apple, they said it was supposed to represent a lust for knowledge, a lust for knowledge, and that despite of, despite of the technology that they were struggling with back in the old days of Steve Jobs where they were struggling, they will still progress. Isn't that a perfect picture of mankind today where we're all struggling, but we aim for progression? So technology will increase. So Satan has his, uh, he has his own genders, he has his own nations, and his technology as well. He has his own rainbow. He has his own rainbow.